Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you listening right now, you wonderful human you, Peter Bohack, Philip Less, Howard Yermish, and brand new patrons, Vortex, Yipong Tong, William, and Simon! Yay! So many new patrons, this is great. Ow, ow, ow. On this episode of DTNS, I went to the Intuit Dome in Los Angeles, and I'll report on how facial recognition made go into a crowded sports arena a dream. Sarah breaks down a report that says facts and evidence can convince people if they're from a chatbot. And Dr. Nikki is here to tell us how invisible mice are real and what they might be good for. Don't go to sleep. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, September the 13th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. From Studio Animal House, which is very spooky today, I'm Sarah Ooh. Lane. Drawing the top From tech the stories. Invisible I'm... Goat Farm, I'm Dr. Nikki Ackermans. And drawing the top tech stories in Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. And I'm the show's producer, Roger J. That was one of those notebook LM style moments where you talked <laughs> yeah. over each other just so to sorry. prove that it was And the right. humans go, wait a second, you're not perfect. <laughs> Human error. Human error is real. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, this is going to be a great show. I, I'm, I'm excited uh, to share my experience with giving up my privacy for convenience uh, and learning about chatbots and invisible mice. But let's start with the quick hits. Spotify announced the addition of managed accounts for children younger than 13 in a pilot program available first for subscribers with a family plan in Denmark, New Zealand, and Sweden. The accounts are part of a parent's account. It lets the child stream songs without affecting the parent's account recommendations. Parents can also set what aspects of Spotify the kids have access to. Spotify does have a kids app already, but it is way more restrictive than this is. The managed account option allows for... A sort of middle ground. Hmm. The U.S. has proposed a new rule that would prohibit items subject to U.S. China tariffs from getting a customs exemption for being low value. There's an existing rule that says that if a package has a value less than $800, it doesn't receive the scrutiny that other packages do. And essentially is acknowledging like, yeah, we're not going to make those packages pay customs duties. However, President Biden's administration believes that the large number of low value packages coming from Chinese retailers like Xi'an and Timu might make it worse worth checking. So uh, neither Xi'an nor Timu paid any import duties in 2022. The idea is they will pay import duties if these rules go into place. The administration says the number of exempt packages has risen from 140 million to more than a billion in the last 10 years. Apple will allow third-party app stores to be installed on iPads in the EU starting September 16th with the arrival of iPad OS 18. A new feature in the release candidate of iOS 18 adds parts activation lock. It legitimately dissuades thieves from breaking apart, otherwise theft-locked iPhones and then selling those parts. Now the parts are also locked to an account and can't be swapped into other phones. So this will affect thieves, yes, but it also means that legitimate re repairs using parts from broken iPhones will also be affected. Double-edged sword indeed. At a security summit earlier this week, Microsoft announced plans to allow security vendors to get more capabilities to operate outside of the Windows kernel. Uh, this would prevent situations like CrowdStrike's Falcon sensor bug, which brought down an entire operating system. Uh, Microsoft is moving slow so that it can take into account the needs of the security companies that will use the capabilities. They tried to kick everyone out of the kernel once without consulting first, and everybody got very upset because they weren't sure they'd be able to do all the features they do in their security products. So now they're taking it with everyone on board. Microsoft said, quote, designing and developing this new platform capability with input and collaboration from equal ecosystem partners is what they plan to do this time. Starting in early 2025, Uber will start offering rides through Waymo's autonomous taxis in Austin, Texas and Atlanta, Georgia. Uber already offers access to Waymo rides in Phoenix, Arizona, and Waymo also operates its own service there. Uh, Waymo also operates its own service in San Francisco and Los Angeles. And I was behind a Waymo this morning and boy, did it do well in traffic. I'm loving them. Look at that. So have you all heard about the Intuit Dome in Los Angeles? It's the new arena for the LA Clippers. LA Clippers are owned by Steve Ballmer. So it's it's a very tech forward sort of situation. Yeah, yeah. I I I'm I I was aware that the Lakers and the Clippers played at a 
crypto.com arena, if that's what it's still called. Formerly Staples, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and that the Clippers were were were, were getting a spin out. Yeah, they got their own place. It's like super teched out. Uh, and I went there for a concert yesterday, so I got to experience firsthand what you have to do in advance. There's a lot of preparation you as an attendee have to do. Uh, you, They send you multiple emails saying, you have to download the Intuit Dome app. I'll download it before you get there, because actually the first time they had a concert there with Bruno Mars, uh, <laughs> They had everybody download trying to download the app while they were at the arena, and it, it kind of caused a problem because everybody was trying to download it at the same time. Also, everybody has to have your own ticket in your own app. Uh, with Ticketmaster, I don't know if a lot of people realize this. You can you can go up with like three or four tickets as long as everybody's with you and just show them all four, and then they let all four in. Uh, Into a Dome doesn't work that way. Everybody has to have their own ticket on their own phone, except in some cases for children, but otherwise. You, you got to transfer that ticket, even if you buy it for everybody. Uh, if you want to buy something at the venue, you'll need to add a payment method to the app. It, it, being cashless, I don't think is a big deal these days. I don't, I don't know how many arenas you, you all have been to, but that that's pretty typical to say you have to use a credit card, right? Um, mm -hmm. If you want to buy something while at the venue, you have to have your payment stuff in the app. And optionally, you can add a selfie to the app to use what the Clippers are calling game face ID. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Instead of face ID, it's game face ID. I mean, is it the, I mean, it, this is not an iOS thing, right? So it's technology no. that can be used on a variety of smartphones. In fact, that was kind of frustrating to some people. You can't use Google Wallet or Apple Wallet. You have to use the Intuit Dome app for everything. Uh, but if you do say, you know what? Privacy be damned. <laughs> Let me just give my face to the LA Clippers. Uh, you can take advantage of an extra option when entering the stadium. If you're using the facial recognition, you just walk down an aisle of cameras. You, you don't stop. You don't take your phone out of your pocket. There are a bunch of employees with tablets standing around looking at the tablets and telling you like yeah just keep walking just no do you, you don't have, have to, stop. to walk at a certain pace nope. i mean do you have to do they say like hold your head up high like <laughs> like where <laughs> no, are we've the cameras got, we've, we've got video of me doing this but uh but basically yeah you you just you just walk you just uh, that's the video where if you're watching the video that's the video of of eileen going into the store uh not the video of us entering the stadium but but yeah you just you just walk uh and they, they're basically, the attendant's job is to make sure that everybody that's in that aisle is properly recognized, but they have like six different cameras. Uh, and the other job they have is to tell people like, no, you can just keep walking. You Don't worry <laughs> about it. You don't have to do anything. Like you don't have to stop. You don't have to look into anything, uh, et cetera. I mean, I wonder what happens when somebody walks through and, and I don't know, there's a flag of yeah, some kind. They probably just stop that person and say like, oh, I'm sorry. Do yeah, you not need to see have your the face ID. ID? We need to send you to the other line because the other line you tap like you would normally do with a ticket. So there master. are these two options. Yeah. And they have a sign right at the beginning that's like, if you have game face ID, go this way. No game face ID, go that way. They even have an option for people who don't have phones. You can you can go up to someone and say, I don't have a phone, but I do have a ticket. And they'll set you up with a wristband that'll that's allow important. you to do all the tapping stuff. Um, but if you also, if you do face ID, and, and the video folks got a, a preview of this just a second ago, uh, you can use it to get into the store. Now with that, you can't just walk in. You have to wait for it to recognize you and verify you because it's just the one camera. I think the difference is when you're walking in the ticket line, they have like so many different cameras, you're bound to get registered on one. But in the stores, food, souvenirs, whatever, you just walk up, it recognizes you. You don't have to hold your phone up. They tell you like, no, you can put your phone away. Uh, and then it's like, hello, Tom. And you just walk in and grab whatever you want and walk out. It's a it's a just walk out. I don't know if it's Amazon's just walk out technology, but it is following you around in there. And like they have hot food, they have cold drinks, they have souvenirs. Um, and I, you know, I walked over, picked up a burger, picked up a margarita in a can. And <laughs> the other thing it does is age verification. So the attendant on, at the exit is usually just telling people, yeah, just walk out unless you have alcohol. Then she'll look at a tablet and it'll say, oh, no, that person's fine. And then 
I guess it's the stadium policy that alcohol has to be opened before you walk out uh, of the store for some separate reason. So she's just like, can I open that for you? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's uh, but I saw like the cap thing like like no, it's because people throw caps this. onto the onto the field. But it's it, it was a pop top. So oh, well, then I don't know. I think it's to stop people from smuggling in their own alcohol. But um, but I didn't have to show a card, whereas younger people in front of me, she's like, oh, I just need to see your ID. Uh, so it's doing some age verification, but uh, if it's uh, some double duty, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're within 10 years of 21, I think it's probably going to make you show your ID. But I mean, yeah, so, so what, if you want food, um, you know, you're going to get a burger, you're going to get a margarita type thing. Yeah. And let's say that, I don't know, you like extra ice in your margarita. There is no person on the other side handling this food and drink right no no this it's, is it's all it, automated it's it's all just on a shelf there are attendants in there so you could ask them like do you have extra ice i didn't do that so maybe they yeah. have that somewhere um but yeah pretty much everything is there and the food was hot like it was not like oh this has been sitting around and got cold mm. situation like we we got some korean fried chicken and i got a hamburger uh and it was it was super hot uh the the other thing is when you get to the seats each seat has a game controller apparently when the clippers play there there's there's going to be games you can participate in from your seat that will show on this big wrap around screen and a USB C port for charging your phone the USB C port at my seat did not work it, there was no electricity going through so it using so using that in a know. public space is not usually recommended <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like being true. on an airplane you just you hope for the best but yeah, what does the game fingers. controller look like it's 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 just a up down. It's just a, a directional keys. So I'm I'm not like sure how that's going to work. Uh, like in front of, like on it's the like seat in clipped, front of you, clipped onto the side of the seat, and then it's like like the game controllers uh, okay. in airports in airplanes, right? Mm. You you pull it out with a, and it and it has I a see. little retractable cord. Um, there's a bunch of other technology that I didn't actually get to see, but I read about two megawatt rooftop panel array uh, for solar power uh, generates enough solar power for the arena's onsite batteries so it can operate fully off the grid for seven hours. This this 18,000 seat arena. Uh, they also have the solar panels tilted at an angle that allows wind to pass through uh, so that you cool the building partially through natural air uh, and the air conditioning is distributed at every seat through small vents, which keeps you cooler personally, but it also means uh, you have 100% fresh air at all times and they're spending less money cooling because of the way it's delivered. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, and I have to assume- uh, I was impressed. Uh, Most of the stuff worked except for the USB-C port. Everything else really worked. I have a question. The Intuit Dome, I would assume, is gonna be part of the Olympics in 2028 also? I think so, yeah. Probably. Len, what's your question? Do the seats recline? Yeah, they do the rocker <laughs> thing, right? Not full like lazy boy recline. Can you like, nap? Yes. <laughs> they have huge leg room though. Like the the leg room is apparently the biggest in the NBA, according to something I read somewhere. Well, you probably need that for the tall guys. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. A lot of tall fans, not just tall players. With the end. it sounds it sounds pretty great. I'd like to see this uh, eventually uh, put into airports, possibly. Beyond yeah, they're doing security. something similar at TSA, you know, with Delta, I've done that where you just look at it, you put in your driver's license, but you look at it and it's like, yep, you know, we know you have a ticket, go on in. Crazy. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, well, whether or not you go to a show at uh, Intuit Arena, you may uh, have uh, conspiracy theories. <laughs> Lots of people do for a lot of reasons. A paper published in the journal Science shows the interactions with chatbots reduce the strength of people's belief in conspiracy theories for as long as two months after that interaction. The scientists found 2,190 people who believed in one or more conspiracy theories. Each participant engaged with a chatbot charged with being persuasive and aware of the previous responses of the participant. So they, the chatbot knew what the participant was going in with. The LLM then responded with facts and evidence tailored to that particular person politely, but even when the chatbot was restricted from trying to build a rapport and a follow-up, the results were the same. 20% reduction in misinformed beliefs. That is more than the usual 1.6% achieved by other methods, <laughs> like human to human on Facebook. Mm. Yeah. The, the, the surprise for this, I think, is the fact that facts were the key, 
right? Like when they said, okay, don't try to be friends, be polite, but don't try to be friends. It had the exact same effect. And when they removed facts and told it like, just be persuasive, but use whatever tactic you want, you can make up stuff, the effect disappeared. They were not able to persuade people. So the the so the conclusion of the of the researchers here is that it's not the facts that are the problem because a lot of studies have showed when you confront people with facts they dig in to their beliefs mm. even more. It's that you're coming at them it's with the a delivery. broad, yeah, yeah, it's a broad based approach, and so you're confronting them with facts that aren't persuasive. And what the chatbot was able to do better than humans was understand very quickly. Oh, these are the kinds of facts and evidence that they are concerned with. And I'll use Which those is, instead of others. And this is so interesting to me because there's such a conversation going on right now about chatbots and large language models and mm-hmm. when do they hallucinate and what do they get wrong and you know how much can we trust them and you know should this be running our lives you know the human brain is still the best brain but then you have a study like this that shows that if Nikki and I disagree on something and I'm like, Nikki, I've done my research. Just listen to me. <laughs> Nikki's going to be like, no, God, I don't even, you, you know, you got it wrong. You know, you're, exactly. you're not paying attention. Humans want to be smarter than the next human about a lot of things. And something like this can take it down a notch. I find this to be one of the first instances where I'm like, yes, like AI is doing the work that we don't want to do finally. <laughs> Yeah. It's not making art. It's having the arguments that we don't want to have and it's solving them. Great. This is a great use of, of AI. Whether, <laughs> you know, you probably have to control for a lot of things in this. You have to double check yeah. its own facts and all that. But I like this. This is a positive outcome. I think this is good. And they touched on this a little bit, but I wonder how much of this has to do with the fact that we are emotional, right? Yeah. And we get distracted when we're trying to convince someone as calm as any of us may pretend to be it's easy to get caught up with like, no, 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 you're not listening, right? Yeah. Uh, and the chatbot will never have that happen. Doesn't care. It, 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 it never gets flapped. <laughs> it yeah, never gets flustered. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Also, you know, the, the idea of conspiracy theories, it's like you can have a conspiracy theory that turns out to be true. I mean, yeah. not every conspiracy theory <laughs> is just like s- some psycho, like outlandish thing. But for the most part, this is... You know, someone say, uh, saying, I believe I believe this theory to be true. And the chatbot saying, but here are the facts and you don't agree with those facts. So, you know, can I yeah. can I can I sway you? And I mean, we're seeing that. Yes, the answer is yes. I laughed a little the way you phrased that, but you're right. Like a lot of things that people think are conspiracy theories might not be conspiracy theories because they're they're just in, interesting theories. Uh, and this study said, no, we are only looking for people who believe things that are not true, right? Mm, so right. when we're talking yeah. about conspiracy theories, we aren't talking about something that ends up being true. These are falsifiable, right? Like, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. uh, steel can melt under these conditions kind of situation. Uh, yeah, and, if, I, and, if I'm like, you know, yellow and blue, do not make green. And the chatbot's like, well, here are all the reasons that it does. Yeah. Then, you know, this is, you know, maybe maybe Tom can't can't c- convince me of that because I feel Watermelon like he's. Does I don't know. Taste good. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, well. Yeah. This, yeah. This, <laughs> not if, give me your best chatbot. If this is developed further, um, I could see instances where it would be interesting to use it for fact checking live, if we can trust it at that point. But that's been something where. You can have, you can know that maybe these things are going to come up live, say in a debate or something like that. Mm. Um, but having something that can react really quickly on the spot would be a benefit, whether yeah. we trust it enough to do that. One yeah. of the keys about this was the way it was done. They had the participants answer open ended questions about theories they believed in uh, and what evidence they relied on for their beliefs. Then they had the bot summarize that mm. for it to say, like, so it sounds like what you're saying is X to mm-hmm. see like, oh yeah, no, that, and then the participants were able to say, yes, that properly summarizes it, or no, actually it's a little bit like this. That gave the chatbot a little more to work on to tailor yeah. it individually. The problem with chat, with fact checking live is you're trying to do it for a group and every member of that group needs it to be tailored a little bit differently. That's a good point. Maybe this is an instance where we can learn something from the AI. We can, we can adapt that technique yeah, to convince I w- our friends. 
I was wondering, I, the, the scientists who did this paper seemed to think like, yeah, we'll never be able to replicate this. Like we, <laughs> we are just depressed. unable to adapt that fast and keep our emotions out of it. Because uh, that's the scientist that had to interview the conspiracy theorists. <laughs> He's just lost all faith. <laughs> it's just like, there's no way a human no. can do this. <laughs> Forget it. Only a chatbot could do this. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, maybe- I... We've seen from uh, our conversation yesterday about um, podcasts being replicated. Are they replicated perfectly? Certainly not. Probably but kind of close. Kind of close. Yeah, you know? we're going to take a deep dive into that today. <laughs> Let's get right mm-hmm. into it. It's Interesting. pretty crazy. Uh, a little wow. bit of a departure for us today. Uh, these are all <laughs> tropes from the Notebook LM conversational summaries, if you're lost. Uh would you like us to talk about something else beside that on the show? Let us know in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Do you believe in ghost mice? Well, we're not a chatbot, but we're going to convince you that they're real uh, because we have gotten one step closer to the invisible man, uh, the invisible mouse. Earlier this month, a group of scientists from Stanford University published a paper in the journal Science describing how they achieved temporal transparency in the skin of live mice. What is this, (laughs) Nikki? How does that even work? It sounds crazy, and the crazy part about it is that it's actually relatively simple. So this is super fun. So this actually came from physicists. And I'm going to give you a little bit of physics theory, but don't let your eyes glaze over. So pretty much this is how this works. Every material has an index of refraction. If it is a transparent material, that's going to be a lower index. Okay. So when light passes through materials with different refractive indices, it bends the light's path. For example, if you're using a magnifying glass or if you're trying to like fry ants with it and you create like a little focus of light, that is refractive index more or less between the air and the magnifying glass Uh, don't do that ants don't deserve that in tissues like your skin you have cells that have membranes that are made up of lipids you cannot see through your skin so far lipids are fats right lipids are fats yes and they have a higher refractive index than the water that is surrounding these lipids Mm -hmm. so all of these cells put together act like a bunch of randomly oriented lenses that scatter light in all directions and that means that your tissue is opaque you cannot see through it oh, okay so it's like it's it's like uh, a frosted glass <laughs> kind exactly, of exactly it's just except scattering it's your skin <laughs> yeah yeah okay um so i will clarify that there are other techniques that can make a mouse transparent but it can't do it while they're still alive because mm. it bursts all of the skin cells. So it it like destroys all the lipids in the cell membranes, meaning the cells can't stay alive, but you can That's then see through the it. mouse. Yeah. Um, and so in this case, they actually applied this to living animals and it was not harmful, which is rare. The, the mice and any future human applications appreciate that very much. Yeah. So it wasn't harmful, but it wasn't effective either. It, it was. In, in live mice. It was. So how did they do this? How did they keep the the mouse alive and still make it transparent? So instead of removing the lipids like they would do in the in the dead mice, they actually change the refractive index of the tissue. See, I'm bringing this back to Uh match the the one uh, of the water that was surrounding it. Okay, (laughs) to do this, they are injecting a dye into this uh, tissue that would change it. And so they tried a few different candidates. I thought it was pretty funny. They tested this on very thinly sliced chicken breast. <laughs> um, <laughs> science. Uh, and they they settled on this yellow dye called tartrazine um, or yellow five. This is a dye that's used commonly in the food industry. I and actually if you know read, yellow five because my dad was a food scientist. <laughs> that's there amazing. you go. And if you've yeah. read titles about this, they talk about Dorito mice. It is found in Doritos and in mm-hmm. Kool-Aid. Um, so it's a common food dye. It's not harmful to us. Um, especially if you, you know, if you eat Doritos, you know, you know it. Um, And so they put this dye into different areas on a mouse. So they put it on the scalp, they put it on the abdomen, and they put it on its leg. They had shaved off the hair first to make things easier. And it took like a few seconds, like if you're rubbing in a cream, and they started to see tiny blood vessels. um, Actually, on the scalp, you could actually see the pulsing of the blood vessels um, as like blood was going through them. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. And, and so, on the ab- so it goes more than just the surface level. It goes deep into the skin. It's like three millimeters, which is okay. pretty good, but which is enough. not yeah. the entire mouse enough okay. to go through the skin. Yeah. Um, 
in the abdomen, you can see the organs. It's a little bit orange tinted because it's a yellow dye. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see the organs digesting. You can see breathing. Uh, and when they put it on the leg, they could see individual muscle fibers in the skin. And this is like a huge breakthrough, but they're literally just rubbing dye on their skin and changing the physical properties, the refractive index. Um, so I thought that was pretty amazing. It's I mean, I guess my, my, my initial question would be <clears throat> if something like this could be achieved in humans to look at somebody who is going through, you know, cardiac arrest or, you know, anything where it, you can on the outside before surgery or mm -hmm. in conjunction with surgery, you know, be able to see what's going on on the inside of a body. So there's a few limitations as there always are, and this mm. is brand new. So, so like I said before, right now, it only goes through about three millimeters. So not enough to go through like your whole chest to see your heart, mm. um, especially that they've only tested it so far on soft tissues. So like brain muscle and skin, but not hard tissues like bone, which would probably be harder to see through. How did they do it on the brain if they can't go through bone? Did they cut away the skull? How do they usually do those kinds yeah, of things? Okay. Yeah, yeah, they probably okay. just took some tissue out and uh, tried it and, on that. Right. Uh, maybe it was not alive at the time. Hmm. Um, so because we can't quite do bone yet, and I assume cartilage and things like that, we don't have a completely invisible mm -hmm. mouse. We lied to you a little bit in the title. Um, but <laughs> there's still some advantages. So if you think about, for example, trying to draw blood, that's just straight through the skin. So mm -hmm. if this got adapted for human use, that could be one way to do it. And the, the main author of this of this study said that, you know, it's really actually seems like magic. But when you understand the physics, it's actually pretty simple, which is and, and everyone who's in this field is kicking themselves for not figuring this out sooner. Yeah, well, that, it's one of those things where you're like, oh, you just rub this particular dye. It's yeah. weird that yellow is the thing that makes the skin. So the reason that it's yellow is that it blocks out blue, which is uh -huh. ultraviolet. And it it uh, therefore lets more infrared it come through. It absorbs more. Oh, okay. And that's how it gets transparent, which and then is it's just so cool. It's not reflected until it hits the things below the skin, and then you can yeah. see them. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Exactly. Wow. So, but at three millimeters are th uh, not that we're all thick skinned, but all humans are thicker skinned than three millimeters. So we need to. You know, have I don't know exactly, more. but I would assume it's like maybe ten. Yeah. But we could yeah. get there. I don't know. Yeah. I want to see where a, this goes. A deep penetrating m m moose of a rub of yellow dye. <laughs> Maybe some abrasive <laughs> dye scrub. Yeah. Um, little micro needles. There's got to be somebody in the cosmetics industry who's like, wait, I know how to get it, you know, far. Yeah. Far oh, this is this is gonna accelerate quickly. <laughs> I think talk they to just the moisturizer need people. The paperwork and for humans, and then we'll get it very soon. Ah, this is uh, this peeled. is. Fascinating. Keep your eyes peeled so you can look through. So you can't the mouse. see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I cannot wait to find out what Len Peralta has drawn today. Oh boy. Well, you know, uh, leave it to me to take a very complicated subject and uh, bring the bring it down to the lowest common denominator. <laughs> uh, this is uh, an image. I just thought, you know, the invisible mouse. Right here is a, he's going for. Uh, um, world domination, so he's pouring it on his head. <laughs> um, but uh, he, he's not uh, he's not ne necessarily naked there. Um, oh, oh, the emperor with no clothes kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Or he, yeah. he, well, he thinks you know, he's more uh, invisible than he is, is yes, what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. My favorite part of this is uh, the, the little mouse lady saying, Kukla, Fran, and Ali. I don't know why. That, <laughs> that is a reference. That, that is, is a, deep a reference. Cut. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of dated me. But if you are interested in this image, uh, you'd like to see it, you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len, and you can back me at the DTNS lover level, and you get that immediately. Or you can go to my online store, which is lenperaltastore.com, get it that way, or you can commission me, which would be great. And you should. So awesome. Go yes, check it please. out. That's Thank really you. good stuff, Len. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Nikki Ackermans, uh, I mean, you you started this whole thing with invisible mice today. <laughs> Although we, we got, we got, we got a lot more information about what, what it actually is and is not. Let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Absolutely. So everything that I do can be found at my website, NicoleAckermans.com. And I would love to remind everybody to get your boosters today. 
Not seats, shots. Shots in the arms. Yeah. You could sit at a booster seat while you get your shot. You could. You, you could yeah. booster squared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to. exactly. You, could, you, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to go for my booster and s request a booster seat. I'm going right after the show. I, and I'll, in my car, I'll turn anyway. on the booster power as I go there. And the person at CVS <laughs> is going to go, every seat's a booster seat with this shot. There you go. My local CVS is definitely not giving out boosters. But um, <laughs> yes, uh, Kaiser, yes, I'll see you this weekend. Uh, watch Tom's top five folks, the show where I break down the top five things you need to know about technology. And this week we got, we got deep. Uh, we're talking about things to know about solid state drives. Uh, if you want to know everything you need to know about solid state drives in 60 seconds, go check it out at daily tech news show on TikTok at DTNS picks DTNS P I X on Instagram and youtube.com slash daily tech news show patrons stick around for the extended show. Good day. Internet. Nikki's not done. We're going to mm -hmm. discuss the implications of giving mushrooms robot bodies. And then we will get to our rest of our Friday fun with a true or false quiz about the secret and potentially fictional life of lab mice. Don't miss it, patrons. Dun, Stick around. Dun. I mean, you really can't miss this one. Uh, you can also catch our show. We are live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That is 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. We're back on Monday talking about the next phase of co-pilot innovation with Chris Ashley joining us. Talk to you then. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host, Rob Dunwood. Video producer, Joe Kuntz. Producer at large, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scottis One. BioCow, Captain Kipper, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Jay Stevens, aka Gadget Virtuoso, and JD Galloway. Modern video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A, Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Tom McNeil. Contributors for this week's shows included Nika Monfort, Terrence Gaines, Chris Christensen, Scott Johnson, and of course, our science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Thanks to all our patrons who make the show possible. Is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Well, I screwed up that stinger, didn't I? <laughs> uh, it was, it was, it, it got my attention. 